Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And today is part two of building the Racer's Wedge by AMT, or more correctly, MPC, because MPC is the company that first developed this piece of tooling and this piece of tooling. And they had originally designed it to go on this model here. If you watched my video on the open road camper, you would know that this pickup truck was originally tooled by AMT and then it had an interesting existence where the mold seemed to go back and forth between AMT and MPC. And MPC developed two separate kits. One came with this and the other one came with this. And then it looks like the molds sat dormant from 1972 when it was released all the way up until the, I believe just after the turn of the century, when Model King persuaded Round 2 to produce these again. And we are using the, the ramp truck. And this is the tail end of it. And we're going to be combining it with this really, really sad old Econoline. So what we will be doing is losing the whole back end of this Econoline. So we've just basically got a chassis. And then we're going to be putting this onto our lengthened and strengthened frame. I realize that uh, Willie and Herman are going to have to strengthen their frame before putting this on, and we will be doing that. So, if you watched part one, you'll know we're missing a lot of parts from our Econoline. So what we will be doing is this kit here is AMT's Phantom. So I'm going to be combining copies of AMT Econoline parts, and I'm going to be using them to complete an old MPC Econoline. Boy, that's complicated. But at any rate, we're going to start making some molds. We're going to make a new mold of our tires, because last time I did some tests and had some success, but I'm thinking the mold is getting a little tired. And we're going to have to make molds of the engine, a lot of the suspension parts and things like that. So the quicker I stop talking, the quicker we can get on to doing that. So for making my molds, I like using these old icing container lids. Nice thing is, is they flex. So when you want to remove your part from the lid, you can usually do it fairly easily. And what I do is I hold the part to the lid with white glue and that has two advantages number one the white glue doesn't form a permanent bond with the part and number two it has a little bit of body to it so it can tend to fill in any gaps and things like that that so that your your part doesn't end up being trapped in the mold later on so I'll be gluing this onto the lid as well as a bunch of other parts So this is the material I use to build my molds out of. Basically what you do is you paint it on in coat after coat after coat until you've got enough built up. So what I'll do is I'll show you uh, making the mold for one of the engine halves.
Okay, that's about 12 coats. And that's one half of our engine block. And this one is the other half plus half the rear axle. This one is the oil pan, the intake manifold, the air cleaner, and the front of the engine. This guy here is half of the radiator. When we peel that off, that'll give us a radiator we can mount on a scratch built firewall. And one of the most important ones here is a new mold for the wheel, and hopefully that will turn out all right. Here's the other half of our rear axle. And these are, I believe, the control arms for the twin I beam suspension. And these guys here are our rear leaf, leaf springs. Should be interesting to see how well they come out. Now, as for the twin I beams, um, I've got them somewhere. Now as for the twin I-beam front suspension, I would like to cast these, and I still might, but that's going to require some sort of a two-piece mold, which I haven't done before, so it's going to have to be a little bit of experimentation there. So this is what the mold looks like when it comes off of the icing lid, and you can see the plastic part is still trapped in there, so the main thing is, is we've got to pop it out, and as you can see, it doesn't really stick to the, the rubber all that well, which is good. The only part that's going to be a little diff difficult is this overhang here. And I suspect I'm going to be wrestling with that for a bit, so I'll turn the camera off for that. Or wait a minute. Ooh. Wow, that came out really, really easy. So there we go. There's a mold for half of our engine. And hopefully... I can get my resin part out of there just as easy. Well, we won't know for sure until we actually cast parts from these molds, but I'm really liking the detail that I'm seeing. Here's our wheel mold. And you can just make out the reverse lettering of the hubcap there. Our leaf springs, they came out fairly cleanly, which is good to see. Here's our axle. Now, there's a little bit of an undercut there, but I think that's really what we're actually looking for. We want that. And here's some of the first parts to come out of our mold. There is a wheel. Now, unfortunately, there is still a couple of pinholes, but I think we can probably deal with those. And I've already sanded the back of this part. But overall, it looks pretty good. And here is one of our engine halves. You can see there's still a little bit of flash that's going to have to be sanded off. But, let's see if we can focus on the on the valve cover here. It's tough to make out, but you can actually see the Ford logo on the valve cover. And actually, as I was going to pick up this part, I accidentally picked up the original part. Now, here is the plastic part. And you can see how it mates up to its resin cast. So I think we we should be able to make a nice replica of this engine using resin parts. So these are all of my engine parts glued together. Now the gray, that's to me a model putty. And there's so much of it because quite frankly, I think I mentioned earlier, uh, one of my engine halves could have been a little better poured. I didn't have quite enough resin in there. And there was a few air bubbles like here and there that I had to fill up. But 
these are basically my parts glued together. You've got the engine manifold here on the top. You've got the water pump housing on the front. And, of course, the oil pan. I still need to put a starter right here. And I'm not quite sure where the oil filter goes. Possibly on that block there. At any rate, though, we have an engine for our ramp truck. And... I've got most of my parts cast, so I think we'll wrap things up for this episode of Dan's Model Works. Now that we've got our, our engine basically assembled, we'll give it a coat of paint and hopefully get to work on all of our other parts. Start putting things together next time. So thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on modeling.